Welcome back to WSU Radio Number One Contrary Station. All of your host, Intro Doc Kev. For me, we have one of the best engineers in New York. We got Mix by Chronos. And one of the most underground artists that you guys got to get in tune with. She making a whole new sound. We got Riot Angel in the building. How's, how's it going? How's life? It's going amazing right now. Boy. So how did the best engineer in New York get in tune with one like her own lane in New York and everything like that. Something different. Like, how did that mess up happen? Zay. That Zay. Right there. That's the best manager in New York City. Right there. Zay? Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm, that's a smart man, bro. He know how to connect dots real well. Not real facts. Well. Definitely. He got the Avengers know. assembled right now. <laughs> like, seriously, we got her, Precious, Sakai, who's a producer, engineer, songwriter. And he can sing. Like, mm. he knows some different shit. And then we got AOC also. Some the melodic, you know. AOC do melodic and uh, drill. drill. And then we also got Nazi BK. Nazi. Everybody knows Nazi. Yeah, Nazi BK. And yeah. now everyone got to start getting to know who Riot Angel is. You yeah, know what I'm right. saying? So, take me back from you. How did you get into the whole music line rap? Because i seen that you've been rapping since, like, 2019. Like, no, I was rapping before that. Before that? I've been rapping since, like, seven Seven years old? Yeah. Well, I started taking it seriously, like, two years ago, two or three years ago. Oh, okay. Basically, yeah. But Asa Rocky fake made me want to rap. Mm, okay. He just, he just so, cool. who's some of your inspirations? Rocky, Juice World, Rihanna. Yeah. That's yeah, different considering the type of music you make. Yeah. Um, I like Cartel. I like Vox Cartel. I listen to him a lot. Cartel. Yeah, that's about it. Mm. Okay. So, how be, those being your inspirations, how did you find this is the sound I want to do, this is my sound, this is who I want to be when I rap? I don't really like my rapping voice. Like, I feel like my voice is too soft to be, like, just straight rapping, so... I started like messing around with Garage Van a little bit, and I realized they had a little like pitch thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I just started making like melodic music because right. I feel like my voice sits better on the beat. Okay. So Garage Van was the was that the first software you used? Yeah, I still use Garage Van. I mean, when I'm not with him or somebody else, like I'm using Garage Van. All right. So as an engineer, I want to know what's your opinions on Garage Van and all that. Because <laughs> I know you. Damn. Because. I don't want to say I turn downplay nobody, but it's like nothing is better than Pro Tools, you know? Pro Tools? In my opinion. That's uh -huh. what I, I prefer to use. And I tell everybody, you just mm -hmm. get that shit. Did you always, when you first started engineering, did you start with Pro Tools? When I first started trying to engineer, it wasn't like me trying to be an engineer. It was more like when I was first trying to be an artist, mm -hmm. I was trying to record myself on like 40 loops, Cubase, and shit like that. Okay. And then when I started engineering, that's when I really got into Pro Tools. Oh, what made you in like get engaged or engineering and leaving the artist behind for a little bit? Yeah, well, I don't even know how I made that transition, honestly. Because one time I went from going to the studio like consistently every like week or two. Okay. And then my engineer, the one I was locked in with, he was like, "Yo, bro, you think you should become an engineer?" And it was just from there. But prior to that, though, I got like mad engineers in my family. Like, oh, my uncle, he's a platinum producing and diamond producing engineer. Oh, wow. He did, uh, like, all the Freddie Watts hit records, like, Trap Queen, 679, by the way. Man, that's uh, dope. Yeah, so that's really where I really get it from. Okay. Right. That's really my inspiration to become an engineer, like, it's actually. All right. And what <clears throat> advice did he give you when he heard that you was doing the engineering and all that? What, what was the advice? Honestly, it was no advice, bro. It was just... He just asked to see what I was working with, what equipment I had, <laughs> what the fuck I was doing. He like as far as like mixing wise, he seen it. He was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" He didn't even like the equipment I was using in the studio at the time. So he was like, "Yo, but you gotta change all that. You gotta change the way you're mixing." Mm. That's what that's what I call advice right there. Okay, so yeah. have you guys collabed on anything? Nah, not yet. <laughs> Wait, are One you guys day. playing too? One day. One day. Yeah, yeah. All right. One day. So you experienced. Rap, producing, engineering, right? Did you, have you have you done anything else besides rapping or making music? I mean, like earlier, like when I had a like I didn't have a MacBook, 
like when I had like I don't even know what type of laptop it was. I tried to make beats like I could, but it's not it's something uh, I wanna do. Like it in, takes too much work. Okay. So I wanna know in your opinions, what do you think is the hardest process? Making the song, rapping it, engineering it, or producing it? I ain't gonna lie, rapping hard as fuck, but engineering is harder. And engineering is harder? Why why do you feel like that? Cause like first of all we gotta sit there for like, like artists like her will take like three, four hours for one song. Yeah. So you gotta record for three, four hours, then spend like another one or two days, three days mixing the song. The artist does their job, just go in the booth one, <laughs> one time. <laughs> Everything valid when they go home. Now it's my job to make sure the rest is done. Yeah. Okay. The artist only has to work on the song one time. The engineer has to work on the song a million times. Nah, um. it, de it depends on the artist. Because the artist might listen to the song, come back and be like, nah, I could attack this beat crazier. Yeah, I see. Yeah, artists came, I asked that same question to artist, producer, and engineer. He does all three. And he told me rapping was the hardest thing. He said, like, finding your sound and how you want to say now, it. No, rapping is hard because, for example, it's hard, but it's just like engineering. It's like, that's where the real tedious shit comes in, I feel like. I, I agree with you to, like, extend because, like, without an engineer, like, a lot of these tracks you be hearing, bro, would sound so bad. Like, <laughs> like, I ain't even gonna lie, like. I ain't gonna lie. Gonna, without order tune sounds crazy. All right. All these, all these things yeah. sound crazy without auto tune. That's what. That's Go auto tune at that. Um, you do you have auto tune with it? Like with your stuff or? Always, yeah. Always. I'm not, but this this is the thing you gotta understand with auto tune though. I feel like you need a certain voice for it to really slap though. Nah, yeah. All right, that's what I'm saying. Why do you feel like auto tune always get hated on? I feel like every time like you hear auto tune, you see the comments like, "Ew, why are you using auto tune?" Like, I mean, if you can't sing, you can't sing. Like. Why do you feel like auto tune gets that bad? It's like, like everybody uses auto tune though. Like Beyonce uses auto tune. Oh uh, yeah, everybody uses auto tune. I, I've learned that like someone, an engineer yeah. told me like you need auto tune to mix. Period. Yeah, you can't. There's no. It's a, it's cool. You can sing, but like, there's no certain shape. Auto tune gives a certain shape <clears throat> and a certain quality to your vocals. Like let's just say you could already sing, like my son Sakai, he could sing his ass off. But even then, he still needs an older tune because that makes his voice sound lighter and we're not perfect. So at, part, at times where we might be trying to sing, we might think it's perfect, but you just might go off pitch in certain parts and not notice it. And that's mm -hmm. where, where the older tune comes yeah. in and that just fixes all that. Okay. So it makes these motherfuckers sound like they absolutely perfect, but they're not. <laughs> it's like, apart from older tune, there's a thing called Melodyne, bro, that goes be before older tune, like after they record the song. When we're mixing the songs, like let's just say the artist went off pitch one time while recording, we just drag that back into pitch, and it's like that never happened. Nah, that's crazy. Jeez, it's it's like, beautiful. Like it's it, like a it, science to it. it. Yeah, so it's like that's why all these artists sound perfect mm. at the end of the day because yeah. of auto tune, melody, or whatever the fuck niggas use, or whatever pitch correction niggas decide to use. Without that, there will be no Beyonce, no nothing. Okay. From the moments they started making music, they were using it. All right, and you was agree with it. So I want to know, like, so my favorite artist is X, right? To extent, because you, you need at the end of the day, you need a unique unique voice. Unique voice. Like, yeah, that's like Gunna has a unique voice. Like, like mm. Trippy has a unique voice. Trippy. Juice got a X got a unique voice. TJ, you know? nah, yeah, I, TJ has a unique, unique voice. voice. Yeah, and Boogie too. And that's what I said. I, how important, because he, him and Kanye pointed out that this is very part of the BPM, beats part, like, they said, like, if you get a certain type of tempo to it, like, it can make a song go, it become a hit. Hell yeah. Is that true? Hell yeah. All right, because, so I said, I asked that to the and someone was like, nah, it's not true. Like, as long, like that doesn't make what a hit is. Nah, it does. It does? It does. It'd it really be does. little shit, mm -hmm. bro. It really does. The, small, the smallest things, bro, as far as the tempo of the beat, is what makes a hit song. Hmm. Like nobody wants to listen to some slow ass music no more. It's not the eighties. No <laughs> it's not like it's not the sixties. It's not two thousand one anymore. You feel mm -hmm. me? So unless you like doing R and B, but it's still even R and B still has like a certain tempo. Like if you look at most R and B hit songs, none of them are like too slow. It's a certain tempo that they all decide to stay to. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, it's up to understand because it's, right. it's a sign that for like uh, the audience and consumers just take it at first glance. Like, oh, he rapped over a beat, give the producer the credit, but it's like behind the, besides the producer, the engineer. I think producers need more credit. I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah, producers and engineers, they don't need more yeah. credit. I, I feel like producers are right now getting the credit and like people are respecting them, but I feel like engineers, they. Nah, uh, yeah. We yeah. still don't have respect or credit whatsoever, bro. Nobody really goes out their way to properly mm -hmm. credit engineers or respect engineers mm -hmm. like that. How, what approach do you take? Because you probably, you engineered her song before, right? Yeah. So what approach do you have with her compared to like, you know, Nazi BK, Drill Song and stuff like that? Because it's probably a different approach, right? Hell yeah. So like, give me through that pro thought process of you engineering her song. Like, what's your approach? What's your game plan? My, my first thought process is focus on the vibe of the room, the vibe that the song gives me, and amplifying that vibe, mm -hmm. you feel me? Yeah. So like, the song is giving me a trippy, spacey vibe not my job and what i always do first i make sure that's the vibe from the moment we start working on the song mm -hmm. and the way i get that is i just listen to the beat i don't even have to listen to her words i just listen to the beat and i already know the whole song the trajectory of everything is going to go oh okay yeah all okay. right and all right so he he said the vibe and everything like that what type of vibe do you want in the studio when you come in would you like the lights uh, off yeah, do you yeah, yeah, care yeah, about the color you. I want, the, I want it dark as fuck, and I don't want niggas sleeping. <laughs> I hate that shit. That's my biggest pet peeve. That's been the past two days right you, there. You feel me, bro? Yeah. Like, they want to come to the stool, but they come and they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Like, what you here for? Like, Yo, yesterday was funny as fuck, because bro didn't even smoke. to the stool, bro. <laughs> because I, I'm a person that feed off of energy. You tired and sleeping, you going to make me tired and sleeping, and you just fucking up the mood. Like, like I'm the me? same way. Yeah. If I feel somebody... Even if I, I don't even have to see you sleeping. It's like, if somebody in the room is sleeping, for some, somehow, some way I can already feel is somebody here sleeping that doesn't have the same energy that we do. Yeah, bro. Don't and that know. starts fucking me up. And like, you feel like it's like disrespect? I'm, I'm not going to say disrespect. Nah, I look at it as disrespect. Low key, low key, thing. low key, yes. But it's on some shit. Like, sometimes, you know, niggas be <laughs> lit. <laughs> yeah. And they be. If I look at it as disrespect, because it's like, a lot of students have lounges for me, bro. Now that's a fact, too. That, I like, was thinking the same thing. You could just be like, yo, like, I'm tired, but I might just step to the lounge, for me? Right. Instead of just falling asleep while we were recording or working. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I look at it as it's just like, okay. like oh, so, our shit is boring, like, or some shit. Like, for me? Yeah, nah, I, 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 I understand where you guys come from. I, I would like, if, like, for me, if I'm doing an interview and the P you guys about people and they're back there just sleeping, and, like, exactly, it's like, you don't care about what your friends are saying, mm -hmm. like. Literally, you like, yo, bro, what you fuck? And the nigga knocked out, like, alright, bro. <laughs> That's a big fact. Mm -hmm. Alright. And so, how do you prefer to make your music? Are you preferring, like, to be sober the whole time? Like, do you want to get lit? Like, what's your approach? Like, I be, I be, I be smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I smoke, but I freestyle. I just, I smoke. You freestyle? Mm hmm. You, you don't write your music? No. Mm. I punch in. You punch in? I might like if I hear a beat and I like think of a line and someone's not there already, I might write down the line so I don't forget. But besides that, nah, I don't. All right. So, <clears throat> how I started the introduction of you, you have a whole new lane in New York with like the number one like scene is drill and the number two you could say is melodic, the TJ Boogie yeah. type style. You have like a rage like. You know, type of style. Yeah, I, that's the only way I can describe it, because you know what I'm saying? But what are you trying to do to break that threshold, break that mold? Like, people got to start taking you serious. They taking me serious. What? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to managers. You got to um, I'm just going to keep dropping. Mm. Working with Kronos, make some more hits. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Shit like that. Build a, build a, like, a solid sound. Yeah. Are you planning to market your music in New York or because it's a different sound, are you planning to market where that sound is prevalent? No, I'm going to market it here and I'm going to market it outside too. Okay. I feel like there's ways to sneak through the cracks. Man. Yeah. And in your opinion, you know, seeing that you work with a lot of your rappers you know, something like that, and you see how it is, what, what are some advice or ways that you feel like she could f split through the cracks, like she said, in the New York scene. 
She just gotta stick to being versatile and show people she could do any type of sound. She could do a drill song. She could do an R&B song. She could get on some TJ shit or some boogie shit. Mm -hmm. She just gotta stay doing all types of sounds and vibes to show people that she could maneuver in any type of certain situation right. they put her in. Like whether she has to make a song with another drill rapper right. or boogie or anybody, Drake, some shit like that. She already gonna be able to maneuver through those situations, mm -hmm. right? Because right. she's versatile enough. Yeah, and you spoke about versatility. You did do melodic. You said you said you have a drill song gonna be cut. You know yeah, we're precious. We're precious. All right. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, even producers say the easiest type of song to make is drill. Do you feel like that, China, or do you feel like? I don't think any song is easy to make, and I feel like that's just a trash ass statement to say. Because at the end of the day, it's art. Like, since it's so easy, you do it. That's like me saying his job is easy as fuck, and then he tells me to do it. Like, I can't, right. I, I can't do that shit. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So I don't, I don't agree with that. Okay. And um, I want to know more about the drill. Like, do you feel like it's marketable? Do you guys feel like it's marketable? Or, like... It, it depends. Because if we're talking about current Bronx drill... It's like all the dissing is going on, all the name dropping is going on. Yeah, really. I don't feel like that's marketable. But if you're taking a pop smoke, five year four, and commercial approach to it, mm -hmm. and you just start doing no songs that's not diss tracks, basically, feel me? Oh, okay. And I feel like that's more marketable right there. What yeah. you mean by marketable? Like, like radio play, blogs. Yeah, right. I'm not even talking about like the what NYC sounds like type blog. I'm talking about like. Actual, like, actual our actual generation. Mean, block, block. MTV, BTS, yeah. that's what he means. Yeah. Because, for example, radio play, though. Cause for example, look, everybody hates her, but Ice Spice's song is super marketable. Well, commercial. Yeah, it's catchy. She has you every... I was feeling you? <laughs> <laughs> she has every major vlog posting about her. Like, and that's because of the way that song is, for me. Mm -hmm. I bet you if Ice Spice was this thing, Mad people in that song. If it was one of those type of tracks, that song wouldn't have had the impact it did for her career. But well, um, they got a um Cardi feature. Now they got a Cardi feature and still. No, but she's not dropping it, it. No, I'm talking about um. Oh, K Flock. The, the niggas, yeah, K Flock. Oh, yeah. They got a Cardi feature. That they built. But I feel like. I feel like once if he, once he gets released, I feel like their approach, his label's pro approach, is probably gonna be like more marketable. Hell yeah, definitely more marketable. More like Fabio Four and. Cause um he got that shit for example with um Gucci, you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. That's marketable as fuck. Well. And there was no discount, I didn't hear that. Yeah. No Super marketable. Mm -hmm. I feel like one another marketable thing is you know engaging with the fans and your music. I feel like what what when are you, when are you gonna perform? Like, I, 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 feel like I had a performance already. I opened up for um Big Baby Gucci. Okay. Right. How was that? I was scared. That was like my first time. Mm. So, my mom would just leave that there. I ain't even, no, pick it up. <laughs> I ain't even, like, it's a lot. Like, I don't, I didn't know how to control my voice. Like, I, I gotta work on that. I gotta, I don't know. I engaged with my fans, so they had an after party. People was dead, like, can I get a picture with you? I, I, like, I speak to them. But I, I don't really like to talk to people, though. Mm. Why, not? why not? Why not? Why I don't know. I'm the type of person I sit there like and be overthinking. What should I say? <laughs> like if I see someone walking that I know, if I can't avoid them, I'm thinking in my head, "Yo, how am I say good morning?" Okay. Like, so how do you feel when like you're walking and a fan come up or a supporter comes like, "Hey," like can't say like is that awkward com conversations with you? In like, my head, I'd be like, "That's crazy." <laughs> this happened a couple times. Like, oh yeah, that. I'd be like, "Oh, where did you know? That's crazy." Mm -hmm. But I talk, but it don't be long. Mm -hmm. Um, like, are you the type for the performances like trying to create like a mosh pit or something like that? Or, like, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I want I want all that chaos. Why? Well, what get what inspiration did you get from that chaos and something like that? Inspiration? Mm, I don't know, but like I like I like how Travis, Cardi, like Rocky, all the crowds are like mm -hmm. it's just mad chaotic. And yeah, that's what I want. Type shit. Yeah. But, all right, and you know, want to know what's the rollout for this the rest of the year? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you gotta take advantage. The winners come in, so 
you know, the drum rappers like the Montclairs and stuff <laughs> like that. And just for me, and I know that your video, the it ain't safe was a whole different vibe. It looked all the everything. So like, what's the approach? What's the rollout? The market? The marketing for the rest of the year? It's a secret. <laughs> It's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. Word. Mm. And it's how about you? Crazy though. How about you, Chronos? I heard some stuff in the back. I can't say, but Chronos got some heat in the in the <laughs> stash, and we need it. You feel me? Nah, for the rest of the year, I'm just gonna keep working, bro. Fucking um, mm. right now I got a lot of stuff in the works, like big songs in the works. I got some shit um with Bob being a man that I make some master dropping real soon. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I got a lot of Jay the Kingdom songs that's definitely gonna drop real soon. Nas songs. Mm -hmm. I just got a whole project that's coming soon. Fucking, it's a lot, bro. It's a lot going on. Working on her. Working on Pushes. Working mm -hmm. on AOC, like I said. Working on Sakai. Mm -hmm. So it's like we just working for the rest of the year. Just preparing to go dumb next year. Mm -hmm. And All especially right. like since every artist we got is versatile, I feel like. Because in my opinion, drill is slowly dying out and it's slowly a decline. So, but next year it's gonna be this is the type of sound you're gonna hear. In my opinion. Yeah. No, I feel like that's a. I seen a post today where it was like drill is slowly dying out. What's but what's the next what's the next wave for New York City? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is the next wave for New York City. You know, like her type of sound. The melodies is making a comeback this yeah. year or, or next year. Feel me? Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I can agree with that because if you look at the mainstream rap era, like, you know what I'm saying, trap is ru is run by, the, but then you got, like, her sound. That's mm -hmm. like, you don't really see, you just see, like, hints of drill, but it's not as the mainstream as, and I see, like, the new, that's the new sound because we experience every couple years, you know what I'm saying, what, 2012, 2011, 2012, 2013. It was my favorite in New York. I, my my favorite yeah. is like Flatbush Zombies, Joey Badass. It's that my pro era and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every year, New then, York. Every other year, New York changes. New York has a different sound. Yeah. And then 2014 was Bobby Shmurda. Mm -hmm. Then 2015 went back to Boom Bap with Davies, Young mm -hmm. and May, and stuff like that. And, and then, then 2016, 2016 was Boogie, Boogie, yeah, and, yeah, and now we're in drill. Yeah, now we yeah. now we got the drill going on. Yeah. Now it's like we going back. To the melodies again, mm -hmm. in my opinion, that's the way I see it. So like I said, 2023 is definitely gonna be like a big year for our team as far as money motivated for me. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely gonna take off every single artist that we got mm -hmm. for sure. Every single artist, okay. And I was saying, like, you know, what I'm saying, what's how is it is it hard for you guys to like be as a team? Because you know, AOSA, you can find videos on him eight, nine years ago, rapid right? videos three years ago four or five years ago, so he has, like, an older approach. Then you have Precious, who hasn't, like, dropped anything yet. With her, she's new two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And then the producer, like, every, how you guys mesh? How did how did that team work? Everything. I want to know how did that all come together. Honestly, we just make it happen, bro. <laughs> like, right now, we just try to find each lane that every rapper could fit in. Like every artist could fit in, and like if we could have each artist work with each other, like we could hear, if we hear a song where we feel like another one of our artists might fit that, so make that happen. Even that though it's not the same crazy. world, yeah, even though it's not the same world, right. we make it happen. Feel me? Yeah. We put it all together. You never know. You you might hear some R and B drill come out of nowhere in the club. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. Word. From Sakai and her or the Precious. You never know. Right. It's definitely like a lot of ways we've been making the work happen despite the different sounds that each artist has or like you said a different work history yeah because for example precious and you'll say have a fire a few fires tracks on the works right? yeah and like she even got a song coming out soon it's called heartless down me and you say helped the right like we wrote that song with her oh right? yeah that's another thing that's some real team shit for me. yeah that's another thing i'm trying to do for like 2023, I'm trying to just break the barrier. I think that's what you're talking about as far as yeah. so f fire in the work. Yeah. I'm just trying to break the barrier from just being an engineer. So I want to work on like being a songwriter. Mm. And then later on towards the year, oh, probably right. just, you know, take that approach, the artist approach. But right now, I just focus more on like securing those credits, mm. securing my credentials, securing plaques for the rest of the year, next year. 
Cause I still don't have my first plaque, for me. but I know I'm gonna get it real soon. No, you definitely are. Hell yeah, yeah, like for example, um, all the songs I did with 2K, with 2K Baby, 2K Baby. and it's about to be on his project. I already know that song is definitely going to bring me a plug. So it's like, I know this year is going to be mm. like a heavy year for me, you know? Right, okay. Definitely going to have you Have you guys all hanged out or chill as a group? All like all at the same time? All of us together, so like, as far as Nas, Sakai, Precious, yeah. Jose, and her in one room? No, nah, not yet. Uh, not yet. Today is probably the closest you get to that because after this, you'll probably just go back to the studio. That's what we were talking about going, going back to the studio. So it's going to be me, Precious, her, and then you'll say. Oh, all okay. right. Yeah, we missing two, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, fine. Yeah. And how did, you know, the Zay and Chronos them reach out to you and, like, well, bring you into the team? I got a um, my manager in Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah, he will be all whatever, but. He tried been trying to get like his visa, but they didn't um sign with the label. I don't know. He ain't been here yet, so it's kind of been hard. So like Zay always showed love, you feel me? And I see he be on his shit. So I was I hit him up. My manager was like, you should hit him up. I was like, You looking to manage any other artists? And he was like, Yeah, we locked in since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Zay hit me up about it. I was actually like, nah, this is definitely a different artist right here, bro. What? I told What's Zay, I was like, yeah, you gotta lock me up with ASAP, like on some ASAP shit. Yeah, we've been going crazy for like three days. Yeah. <laughs> What's the funniest story you guys have together? I mean, I said, we just started locking in three it's days ago. ago. So far, I ain't gonna lie, the first day we locked in, it's like, first 10 minutes meeting each other. Niggas done took shrooms right it's away. <laughs> First 10 minutes we knew each other, bro. That was dope, funny. Nah, that's good. That's, that's <laughs> right. dope. So that's far, it's probably like the funniest shit we've done. We got together right now. Right. And you guys all seem like a unit, all collective, everything. Is, I mean, nah, hell yeah. Everybody spent, hard, bro. Yeah, I spent a whole month with Precious already so far. Mm -hmm. With Sakai. Nah. I used to live with Nas. And I lived up with Nas in Miami for like a month, too. So mm -hmm. I've been around them for a for a long time right now, so it's been, definitely been a lot of funny experiences with all of them. How did you become the official engineer for Nas? Through Zay. Zay? Yeah, because when me and Nas first started locking in, we didn't really get to talk that much, but session after session, Nas just started, it's like every artist that works for me, they become picky and they just want to work with me only, you know? Oh, okay. So that's how I went from there. And then stuff happened, I stopped working with the team that I was before. What you originally met me with, and that's when Zay took me in, and I became Nas and Janet. Um, it was all over the summer, like recently, like June. Okay. So it's all you know. And um, you said he was very like artists are very picky in who they want to work with. Like, are you are you not as picky as well? Bro, I be picky as hell. Cause <laughs> first of all, some engineers be slow as fuck. Cause I'm the type like you know I record like I will punch you in one line. <laughs> Yo, punch it again. You get what I'm yeah. saying? And they sitting there like... Fuck that. She'll do four lines, eight bars, and then be like, nah, nah scratch it. this shit. Switch the beat. <laughs> like, we like, like he, he... And I like the fact you don't get him mad or he don't got an attitude and he's just like, I bet. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, And then certain engineers can't mix my voice. You feel mm -hmm. me? Was it and hard he, trying he can mix mixing her voice or was by the way? Melodies are my thing. Melodies are your thing? Okay. I got my name up with the drill, but... Melodies is really my thing. Mm. Like, I could finesse some melodies, like, no. Yeah. That shit, once you get an engineer, like, an engineer, like, this is another thing people don't understand. Really, I don't think, like, I've seen artists be disrespectful to engineers and all that. I don't think you should do that. Like, I feel like you should have a solid relationship oh, with your wow. engineer. You get what I'm saying? When so, that happens, that's when I stop working with all the sisters. You, you get start, what I'm saying? And you don't want to do like, their shit. Like, they'll come to their main session and wonder, yo, why you not fucking with me the way you fuck with him right now? Like, you wonder why, nigga, what happened last session? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... Well, I feel like that's the difference between me and a lot of engineers. A lot of engineers would just take shit like that. For me, it's just right. like, I don't care. Like, I'm not going to take you no know, disrespect from anybody. Shit. Right. At first, I ain't going to lie, at first... I tolerated really too much disrespect when I was growing up. Because I started engineering when I was a kid. I was 15, 16 years old when I started engineering, feel me? So everybody disrespected me. 
Mm-hmm. So after a few years or like a year or two, that shit going on, I was like, bro, I ain't, I ain't tolerating that shit no more. I'm controlling the session anyways. Types. I That's could, what I was saying. Like, yeah, I could choose to end your session right now. Yeah, when I realized that, I was like, oh, I bet. Ain't nobody going to disrespect me no more because I could choose to end this session right now. Yeah. And it's like, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And I've been in studios where the engineers are just quiet and they just let me do what they believe. So, I'm quiet too. But that's right. because I, me, I don't talk to nobody who I don't feel like is there mentally like I am. Okay. Like, I wouldn't talk to you if you, because I, I could just tell by looking at a person that we the same in a way. But yeah, like, yeah. our mentalities are the same. Just by looking at you or just by the way you conduct yourself. So it's like, if I could tell we're not the same way, I just by not speaking to you whatsoever. All right, so how important is communication with him during your process of music? I mean, I record right next to him. Yeah, I was about to say, we just oh, record yeah. right next that's to each other. Yeah. Just like yeah, how we, we are right outside, now. Same way yeah. we are right now. That's, that's dope. Nah, that's yeah. really cool. So you got to lock in with him for the, you did a month of Precious, did a month of Nas, you got to do a month oh, with yeah. Ryan Angel. Oh, uh, yeah. And with Ryan Angel, how did you get that name, Ryan Angel? Angel comes from, like, my middle name, and, like, it might not see you now, but, like, I'm low-key hot-headed. Mm. But that's where that came from. Okay. So I just took Riot and put Angel together. It's, like, opposite. I like how opposite it is, too. Oh, uh. No, it's like, hot and cold. It's like I'm a oxymoron cold. type of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then I know where Mixed By came from, but where did Kronos <laughs> come from? Nah. Yeah, I did wanted to ask you that. <laughs> like, um, Me, growing up out in school, like over here, when I was growing up over here in school, we got the Greek mythology, Egyptian mytho- mythology. We just got the all sorts of culture mm-hmm. when I went to school, like in middle school and in high school. And to me, Egyptian mythology, I mean, not Egyptian, Greek mythology was like the best mythology, in my opinion. The more mm-hmm. I got into it, the more I had to do research papers, all this extra shit. I started realizing this one out of all the Greek gods, which I that stands out the most. And that's mm-hmm. true promise. That's, that's, that's the Greek god of time. And he was the, one, the father of Zeus, all the strong gods that people grew up, listen, grew up listening about, right? So they are, I'm learning more about him now. I'm like, this motherfucker really hard. I might just call myself Kronos. And I just changed the spelling. Instead of, I believe it's spelled C-R-O-N-O-S. So shit like that, yeah. <coughs> I just changed it to K-R-N-O-S. At first, it had an O. At first, it was K-R-O-N-O-S, so Kronos. But I want to copyright my name. <laughs> so I had to figure out a way to... Changed the name, but still had the same name, so mm-hmm. copyrighted it. And that's just when I took out one oh, it's still Kronos. Oh, the O is silent. That's why I tell everybody. No, it's like <laughs> the O is silent. It's there. Mm-hmm. It's just silent mm-hmm. for copyright purposes. All right. So, so are you guys using music to venture off to different ventures? I know you said when you're exper- A$AP Rocky got you into music. You no, know, oh, yeah. He's also known for fashion. Yeah, yeah. I still uh, want to do that. Rihanna's known for um her beauty, like her beauty line and stuff like that. All right. What is your approach to different ventures of businesses? I'll let her go first. Well, like, when I get to a certain point in my career, I want to start my own label, like, you feel me? But I want to do that. I want to do clothes. I want to do, like, modeling a little bit type shit. Maybe even a little movie, a little cameo in a movie. Mm, what, type what type of genre of movie? A horror film. A horror film? Yeah. A horror film. That's where right. And how would, and I, how would you Kronos? Shit, I always used to, I always joke around to people and tell them that my plan B is to be a porn star. <laughs> but I'm, I'll be joking around. Honestly, right after this music shit takes off, what I want to do is, I want to make movies, like she said. But I want, I just want to full on make movies or be in TV shows, right? A oh, horror Greek mythology. Not even. I just, <laughs> for example, I want to be in power. <laughs> I want to be that should be fun. I want to be empowered. Imagine you just learn that you see crows and empowered. <laughs> just nah, my it's favorite, gonna happen. My no, favorite right. show is The Flash. I want to be in a show like that, like The Flash. Feel me? Shows like that, movies. Mm. Fucking, I want to own my own label too. Uh, but apart from that, I just want to retire by doing Twitch streaming. Uh, it's a whole lot of motherfucking money in that, bro. Not word, bro. Mm-hmm. Like. Kaisen is running up the bag right now. No, he's 
Yeah. He's going crazy. He got, he's the most subscribed right now. He got like 100,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And to subscribe is $5. Uh, Twitch yeah. takes two fifty. He worked out a deal that's 70, 30. So it's like three fifteen. So he's getting paid about like two seventy five a K. It's like 300K a month, bro. Like chilling. Just playing crazy. video games on this computer. Yeah. Yeah. I just need my retirement plan, bro. Just live stream, but what I want to do is I just want to live stream my sessions, live stream mixing and shit like that. And I want to own a lot of studios too, also. Um, That's fine. Like, I just want to have multiple sources of income, but definitely my retirement plan is streaming and owning a labor house. Because right. <laughs> right. I be getting tired of doing shit sometimes, bro. Okay. I got as much as I love doing shit, bro, I get tired sometimes. I'm here. Right. I got some random shit to add, though, but like, when I take off, I want a Taco Bell meal. <laughs> like, you know how Travis Scott got yeah, a meal? Like, does. I wanted Taco Bell meal. Megan like, Stein had the Popeye's yeah, meal. Yeah, nobody touched Taco Bell yet. But people don't like Taco Bell. I don't know. Nah, I like Taco Bell. I fuck with Taco Bell. If you're going you, to make a Taco Bell meal, you got to add the natural fries. That's all I think. Nah, word. I'm like, yo, the box is <laughs> nah, going to be fire. The, like, you got to have the, what's the fries that had, like, that seasoning? Because I used to work at Taco Bell. So I forgot. Taco to Bell is fire. Not how nice it's trash. You don't like what? But I used to work there, so it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean, you know how everything is made, bro. I think the worst, the worst fast food's gotta be bet, um, Burger King and all. Um, nah, Burger King is White trash. Yeah. Nah, White Castle. I used Castle. to work at White Castle too. That was nah, my first White job. White Castle be the only shit open sometimes though. So nah, I'm, I'm, I only worked two jobs my whole life. I'm 20 years old. My first job was White Castle. I worked in that motherfucker for like two, three months. Quick, cause I was about to fuck up the manager, some bitch. <laughs> She threw hot fries at me one day, like fresh out the up, like the Damn. at the fries. She just threw them at me. I'm like, I'm like, fuck this bitch up right now, bro. I had just gotten tatted, bro. Uh, so that's fresh, bro. I shit got my tattoo for like hell, bro. I quit that motherfucker after like two months. Then I worked Taco Bell for another like two, three months. And then I started working studios. Taco Bell, I don't, the only two things I fuck with is the natural fries and the cinnamon delights. Right, yeah. I, know, I used to love the cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's the Don't little, slap though. What's just the little cinnamon bowls? Yeah, it's the yeah, cinnamon delights. No, 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 not that. My fault. The cinnamon twist. The that cinnamon shit is twist. Dirty. Yeah. That yo, shit is mad. Foggy. That dirty. shit is fire. Nah, bro. Taco Bell, yo, they got a cheddar chalupa, a grilled cheese that shit taco. Is and people what? love that Mountain Dew Baja Blaster. That Baja. shit is fire. Nah, that's not the know. fire flavor though. What? Wild cherry <laughs> and the blue. Now you got no each other word. <laughs> and they got the they got a mango one now with like cream in it, like bro. Top nah, off. I ain't gonna lie. I wish I still worked that Taco Bell when they made the liquor because I heard Taco Bell sells yeah. liquor now. Oh, I even yeah. know that. What? But I would have been at like, work saucy. I already used to be sauce, but now I could really get saucy because it's there. Did you have any jobs before you start taking? Yeah, um, I have my own business, uh, my little own business, and I worked at Five Guys. But then, like, I had, like, something similar, but it wasn't the manager. It's on some shit, like, niggas had us at the grill with no AC no. <laughs> in the summertime. So one day I was like, yeah, I ain't even about to do this no more, and I never came back. What, that potato? Yeah. What is that, potato oil that they use? No, peanut oil. Peanut oil, <laughs> yeah. And then I worked as, like, a piercing apprentice, but then I got fired. Cause I didn't remember the gauges and shit, and then I worked at a warehouse. That's that I quit my jobs. I yeah. didn't even submit no two day, nah, no two week that. letter. I just stopped coming. Manager <laughs> blowing on my phone. I got tired of them. Like block, block, <laughs> resuming my piece. Uh, and now you guys are gonna make it to the music industry, you know, yeah. manifestation and all that. Do you guys believe in all that? So oh, yeah. Everything I've feel like everything I'm doing right now is spoken into existence. You know, like when I was in high school talking about. Because everybody that knows me from high school and middle school, they that's all I used to talk about. Like, music. Mm -hmm. Making it music. That's all I spoke about, bro. Right. Crow's going to be the next Kanye. Kanye is very far now. Yeah. You got me. Hell yeah, I'll be the next Kanye right there. Right. Except for the crazy shit. <laughs> right. And then, I can't. My last question, you know what I'm saying, more about the future. <clears throat> you know, Kanye made his legacy, whether he's tarnishing it right now or not. You know, ASAP made his legacy. What type of legacy do you guys want to have with the name, you know, Kronos? And, you know, Riot Angel. You know, people bring it up. Like, yo, Riot Angel did this, like, in 2022, 2023, 24, yo, 25. Yo, as he said, I just want mad plaques. Like, I want mad plaques. Like, and I want, like, to leave a legacy that is cool to be yourself. Like, you feel me? Like, just be yourself. Be authentic as fuck, real as fuck. Shit like that. That's what I want people to know me for. Like, I really stepped in this music shit. I guess I just want people to know me for 
living my life to the fullest extent, bro. Doing everything I want to do without fear of judgment. That's what I think. Type I shit. I don't fear judgment for nobody. If I want to, right now, walk around this campus in my underwear, <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> but it's just because I'm wild, bro. Like, I just want to live my life to the fullest extent. Whatever that, that means, whatever it comes with mm -hmm. down the line, that's what I want to do. I want to keep helping the ones around me. Cause that's just the type of person I am and the type of way I was raised. Just help everybody around you, no matter if you could be broke as shit right now, still help everybody around you. Find a way to help people around you, feel me? Right? Take shit. I just end up just making great music, bro, and quality work, and having a shit ton of plays, like she said, bro. At a young ass age, too. My goal is to be here. Bro, you gonna get that shit. Yeah, my goal is to be rich before I'm 25. You be Grammy now, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah, real soon. But my goal is to be rich before I'm 25. Or by the time I'm 25. So by the time I'm 25, I could just focus on the next step of my life, which is having kids, traveling the world, and really enjoying my life. You know what I'm trying to say? Because all my. I want to have businesses that's going to be making money for me in my sleep. Like, sure. like when Kanye said I made a million a minute, like when him, when him and when with that Kim app, Kim Kardashian app, that's what I want to do. I want to make a million dollars a minute, bro. Like, I just want to be able to sit back, relax, and make money. And then before we head out, we want to say to the supporters, what's the next single we're going to get from Ryan Angel? The single, you, summertime, 2023, spring. Summertime. Wait. Sometime, probably spring. I turned twenty one um in March, so I'll probably probably drop that. The birthday shit. surprise. Probably. The birthday makes like little yachty. Probably. How about you? What's the next single for you? People can be excited for. Friday. Friday. All right. Friday. Thank you for coming too. Where can people can find you guys? Instagram, everything. Well, then I go first. I nope. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at riot dot angel. Where. Friday. You can follow me on Instagram at, at Mixed by Kronos. That's Mixed by K R N O S. The old silent. Yeah, the old silent. Or you can find me on, on Twitter too, Mixed by Kronos 556. I just made that motherfucker, so I need everybody to follow that. <laughs> All right. Thank I'm you trying for to get my Twitter following. lit. Thank you for coming Twitter's through. Anytime, gang. Okay? Yeah. Uh,